I'm Brandon, lead engineer here at Flying Miata, and welcome back to another one of our NC Turbo videos. Now, this is gonna be a series of videos where we go in depth on our brand new Carb Legal Turbo Kit to kind of show you some of the details that really make it stand out and make it work really, really well. So today we're gonna to be talking about the turbo assembly. So basically all of this stuff over here, we're gonna go into, again, the details uh, and what makes it fit well, work well, all that fun stuff. Now, just like I mentioned in the other videos, because it's true of the entire kit, this is all designed in-house. These aren't standard off-the-shelf parts for the most part. Uh, so since we have designed them in-house, we can design them to exactly what we want to be. So the first thing to talk about is where we put the turbo and why. So you can see that we put the turbo right up here. Now we had to put the turbo there because we retain the stock primary catalytic converter. Remember, it is illegal to delete any catalytic converter on any street car anywhere that you live. Since it had to go up top here, we needed to figure out exactly where to put it. We wanted to make sure that we had plenty of room for good exhaust flow out of the outlet, for good flow into the intake here, for clearance on the brake lines and the valve cover. And it's, it's a tight spot. There's not a lot of room in there, but we managed to get it located just right so that we've got perfect clearance on everything. So once we figured out where to put it, we needed something to put it there. So that is the manifold. Since the manifold is pretty buried in the car itself, we'll look at it over here on the engine where it's still kind of buried. And then also with this guy right here. So we tried to make everything as smooth and straight as possible, just like with the intake tube. Smooth and straight is good for response and power and efficiency. So you can see we've done that here. There are a few details to kind of pay attention to. On the number four runner is longer than the rest of them. You can see that the, the length for these three is about the same, you know, within, within reason. This one is definitely longer. So the inside diameter on this one is actually slightly smaller to help accelerate the exhaust gas so that the pulse from the cylinder will hit the turbo at roughly the same time. So the pulses will be timed evenly when it gets to the turbo itself. Now, the other thing to note here is this shape so that's, that's kind of weird. Why did, why did we put that little kink in there? Well, we put that kink in there so that we have room for the oil drain. So in order to address that, we have this little kink here and some other parts I'll show you in a second. The flow is still very good through here. The, the bends are very open and it actually looks worse here than it is. So if you, if you check out our CAD model, we can do a cross section and as we work through the cross section of the model, you can see that there's, it's actually, the manifold is quite open on the inside for very good flow to the, uh, to the turbo. So that kink in the number one runner is there so that we can ensure proper orientation of the center section of the turbo. There is water, it's a water-cooled turbo. So water comes in on one side and goes out on the other, and then oil goes in from the top and comes out from the bottom. Now the water comes in over here and we have it angled so that bubbles are more likely to flow out on the other side. So the more rotation you have there, the better. But for the oil, if you rotate the center section too much, then the oil will actually pool in the center section of the turbo. It won't drain properly and it will coke and it can lead to premature wear on the turbo. So you need to make sure that you get that angle correct. Uh, basically about 20 degrees off of horizontal is what you're looking for. So in order to do that, we have that again, that little bit of a kink in the number one runner. And then we also have this oil drain hose that's very specifically shaped so that we can get the oil from the center section around that number one runner and then drop down here. So it's also metal so that it's gonna be very durable near the high heat parts. And then once it's away from the high heat parts, we use a, an SAE rubber oil hose with a heat sleeve that will still last a very, very long time, uh, particularly now that it is away from the heat. So one of the many things that we paid attention to in the design of this kit is the materials that we use for different parts. So while this manifold is plastic, it's a prototype, we'll pretend that's not the case. We opted for heat treated ductile cast iron for the manifold. 
we could have done something sexier like stainless steel like a cast stainless steel and that would be cool and it would be a lot more expensive with no real performance benefit for our application so for that reason we decided to go with ductile cast iron for the manifold and the outlet. It's a very durable, long lasting material, and it's a very good bang for the buck that lets us produce a kit that is at a very good price point, but is also gonna last for, for a very long time and perform very well. So from the manifold, the exhaust flows into the turbo, and this is the centerpiece of the kit. This is what makes all the power. Everything else is basically just supporting this magical little thing here. So we use a Garrett GT 2860 RS. Garrett turbos we've been selling for about 30 years. The one on my own car has about 200,000 miles on it with zero issues. They're extremely durable, reliable, good turbos. Spools up quickly, gives good power. It's perfectly sized for the two liter and the 2.5 liter engines. So it is a great, great fit for this kit. Now, this is maybe the least modified part or the least custom designed part in the kit, but it's still custom. We've still designed things in here to make it fit perfectly for our situation in this specific turbo kit. So the compressor outlet, we, in order to get the, the proper fitment for the intake hoses and such, we weld this aluminum elbow on. So that gives it good fit right here, tucks in perfectly above the alternator right next to the head. The other thing is the wastegate bracket uh, for, for the actuator here. So this is the standard actuator off of the standard turbo. There's nothing special about that, but we do use a uh, a bracket here that we've designed in-house. It's stainless steel. It's a heavy enough gauge so that it's not going to flex because that can be a problem. It's adjustable so you can tweak it a little bit. It puts the wastegate actuator so that it's in a very easy to access position if you need to adjust it right here. But it also moves it far enough away from the brake line so you don't have to worry about it interfering with the brake lines as the engine rocks. Now, in order to use this actual or this bracket for this actuator, we do have a new rod end here that gives us the length to make everything work right. So just like with everything in this kit, it's refined and perfected for our application to our specifications. We made an interesting and exciting discovery in the development of this kit. All the work that we had put into making it as efficient as possible, all the smooth straight bends, short runs, all that stuff that I keep harping on about, it was all beneficial. So we made a discovery that with the turbine housing. Now the turbine housing is this piece right here. It's what the exhaust flows through. It goes in through the turbine housing, speeds up the impeller, and that's basically what makes boost. There's a lot of turbo tech out there if you wanna get more specific than that. The short version is it with the standard turbine housing that we were using, a 0.64 AR, the turbo was unbelievably responsive, which is good, It's but spectacularly instantaneous response. It was very, very impressive. So it kind of got the gears turning. If the response is that good with the normal housing, maybe we can go to a bigger housing or offer a bigger housing as an option. If you want the most power possible, if you have a track car, if you are, uh, if you have a bigger displacement engine, if you're running a 2.5, then the bigger housing is gonna be beneficial for you because it's gonna be a little bit less restrictive than the smaller housing. The smaller housing is gonna be more responsive. The big housing is still very responsive, but the, the small housing is instantaneous kind of response. So we're, because of that and because of how efficient the turbo kit is, we're able to offer both different, both housings for your application. So if it's more of a track car, if it's a 2.5 car, you're probably gonna want the bigger housing. If it's a street car, if it's a two liter, then you're probably gonna want the smaller housing. Now both housings will do really well at all of the different um, tasks, but you can prioritize a little bit based on your specific needs. So from the turbo, we move on to what we call the outlet, the turbine outlet. Now, this is probably the strangest part of the kit. It's a very weird shape, but it is a very good and effective shape. So one of the misleading things about this on in video and on pictures and such is that it looks really restrictive in some, uh, from some angles and not from others. And 
We had to do that to make sure that everything fit in here. You know, it, it tucks in, the manifold tucks in right here, the frame rail is right here, the catalytic converter is right here. So if you look at it from right here, this looks really restrictive, right? There, there can't be very good flow through that. But if we spin it here, oh, we see that it's very wide here. So it's a little easier to see the increasing cross-sectional area in the CAD drawing. So you can see that as we cut through the model and we go farther and farther down, that oval gets bigger and bigger as we go. And that is what improves the flow and makes the flow as good and efficient as possible to get the exhaust gas evacuated from everything as quickly and smoothly and efficiently as possible. So from the outlet, we arrive at the CAT, the catalytic converter. So again, the catalytic converter is a large, large part of what keeps your car's emissions clean. You have two of them. There's one here and one in the mid pipe. And if you delete either one of them, it is illegal on any streetcar anywhere in the US. So we retain it. Now, the other thing about catalytic converters is that they are expensive. So we retain the stock cat specifically, your stock cat. So we start by cutting off the top of the stock manifold. We replace that with a flange that we then weld onto what remains of your stock catalytic converter. And we end up with a new assembly that has your stock cat with a flange with a four inch V-band that's gonna to attach directly to the outlet. Pretty easy. Everything is jigged up in place with stock bracketry. You tack it, tack weld it into place on the car, pull it off, weld it the rest of the way. Now, if you don't want to do that, no problem. We will also sell you a complete assembly that already has this welded onto it, ready to go, brand new catalytic converter. So you just bolt it into your car, no welding necessary. So we have the stock catalytic converter attached to the outlet with our four inch V-band here but we need to make sure that it's properly supported. Now, the stock setup has a bracket that attaches the cat right here to the block down in here, but we don't wanna reuse that one. You know, there's there could be a little bit of movement. We have more junctions in here than the stock setup does, and we have different materials. So we wanna make sure that there's a little bit of give in the system so that we're not holding it too rigidly. If, if everything is solidly locked in place, then that could cause parts to crack. But if it has no supports, then that could also cause parts to crack because you have a giant exhaust hanging off the back of it that's swinging all around. So we have our bracket here. This is a two-piece bracket. We've slotted the holes on the cat to allow for adjustment this way. And then this hole is slotted to allow for vertical adjustment and it's slotted far enough so that it works for both the two liter and the 2.5. We have these high temp silicone isolators. So they are not going to melt. You bolt it all in, you're good to go. And it's good long-term durability. Now we may be engineers, but we're also mechanics. We also work on these cars and we also wanna make sure that everything is as easy to install as possible. So the way we've designed the, the turbo assembly setup is to be installed piece by piece. That way you're not trying to get some giant, heavy, awkward thing over the fender of your car. You're installing it piece by piece so it's nice and easy. So you install the manifold first. We've got good wrench access for all the points on the head. Then you install the turbo onto the manifold. Again, pretty easy. Some spots are a little bit tight, but there's nothing around it. So you have pretty good access there. Next, we do the outlet. Now, again, the outlet is a really goofy shape, but it actually is kind of shaped like a screw. So if you get underneath the car, you lift the engine up, you loosen the motor mount, you lift the engine up a little bit, you can just thread it right into place. It actually works surprisingly well. And then slip it onto this, drop the engine back down onto the motor mount. The other thing that we've done is we've, we've designed in wrench access for everything. So you can see these recesses here to make sure that you've got enough room for your sockets. But we also have recesses here and there's another one on the backside right here to make it so that your extensions can fit in there and it's actually very easy to bolt the outlet to the turbo. All that detail stuff, we try to make the kit as a whole as easy to install for everyone, pro or layman, as possible. So to install all these parts, you need hardware, believe it or not. So we include very high quality hardware. There are stainless steel studs, locking nuts, and then special Nordlock washers, which are two-piece washers that uh, 
the short version is they work very, very well. We've been using them for a long time. Now, what you don't need is exotic, very expensive, very fancy hardware because of the engineering in this kit. So this flange is horizontal, which means that the manifold is carrying the weight of the turbo and not the hardware. The hardware is basically just holding it in place. So that lets us use very high quality, but normal hardware instead of making the kit more expensive and needing special fancy hardware. So this is a very, very complete kit as I keep talking about, but there are some things we left out. We left them out on purpose. We do not use gaskets at the turbine to outlet or at the manifold to turbine because in our experience, those just fail. All that means if you put those gaskets in there, it just means you have to get back in there later to take them out. We make sure that the surfaces are machined perfectly flat so they will seal on their own with no gaskets needed. All of that said, we do include a new exhaust manifold gasket here. Your car has one, it's metal, it might be fine, but it might not be fine. And we wanna make sure you have all of the parts that you need. So we include a new gasket here so you're not left stranded in the middle of the job. As I've mentioned before, this Garrett Turbo is oil cooled and lubricated and water cooled. So we need to get water and oil to and from the turbo. Now we've already talked about the oil drain down here. We're gonna talk about the water and the custom fittings that we use in our thermal management video. So make sure to check that out. But we still need the oil supply. So the oil supply comes in the top right here. We have all the, the Dash 4 AN fittings that you need. It's a Dash 4 braided stainless steel line that runs over here. We use stainless steel silicone cushioned P-clamps. So these are off the shelf, but they are very nice, high-end, durable, will last forever kind of parts. So they're gonna hold the oil supply line in the right spot. It comes over behind the engine here and dips down to where the oil comes from. So the oil supply comes from here, the oil filter housing. Now there's already a port there. The oil pressure sensor is installed in that port originally. So we remove the sensor, we thread this T in, and we put this fitting in there, and then you've got your hose connects to that. Now these are all high quality parts. They're the right thread. They're BSPT, not NPT, which is kind of close, but not quite right. Uh, in order to install this, you do have to remove the oil filter housing from the block. It's an easy process, not a big deal. However, there's a gasket in there. You might be able to reuse that gasket. You probably could, but we can't guarantee it. So we include a new gasket so that we know that you're good to go. You're not gonna have any questions or issues during the install. And with that, that is the last piece. So that's the last component in this video talking about the turbo assembly and everything that's attached to the turbo on the exhaust side. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions, please reach out to us. We are very excited about this kit. We would love to talk to you about it. Drop a comment down below, reach out to our customer support team. We'll get those questions answered for you. Remember, we have three other videos in this series. We have the kit layout video where we basically talk about the silicone hoses, the routing, some of the details in there. We have the thermal management video where we're gonna talk about heat from here. We're gonna talk about coolant routing, why we did the things we did. And we have our tuning video. We have an OE level calibrator, Greg Vanish with Calibrated Success, who did the tune for us. And there is a ton of details in there to make it safe and clean and powerful and long, long term, especially for the cat as well. So be sure you check out all of those videos. We're also gonna have an installation video. So if you wanna know all of the nitty gritty for every last step for how to install it, We've got you covered there. We also have print instructions. All that stuff's gonna be available on our website and on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you like this kind of stuff, it really helps us out quite a bit. And be sure to check out those other videos and we will see you next time.